joining us to the room. Um, let me know what you think about this uh, virtual background I now uh, have here. Do you, uh, do you like it? Uh, do you not like it? Just you know, we're, we're always uh, always keen to see the uh, we're always keen to see the feedback from you. But um, great to have so many of you here. Okay, and uh, we'll look to begin just in a moment or two, just so we can see. So uh, uh, great to see you here, Ronald. Okay, and uh, um, yep, that's great that you can see me and hear me. Um, that's um, that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, we'll just look to begin in a in a moment's time. There's always a couple of people just late filtering into the into the room. If you're uh, joining us today on uh, on a sort of a live stream through uh, YouTube. YouTube. It's fantastic. It's great to have you here. You're very, very welcome. And I uh, look forward to sort of sharing some ideas, thoughts and concepts with you in a uh, in a moment. So uh, Ronald saying the virtual background is okay. It'd be nice to be able to split the screen as uh, as before. Okay, and uh, yeah, thanks for Ron. We you know, we really always appreciate the um, the kind of uh, the feedback, and uh, we'll you know, we'll move across into the into the slides in a uh, in a particular moment. But just wanted to welcome you here. It's it's fantastic. It's a it's a Friday afternoon here 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 in the UK. It's an absolutely stunning, glorious day wherever you're joining us from. Okay, we uh, I hope it's uh, hope you're having a, a great day at the end of a, what has been a really quite an interesting week um trading wise and uh, we here at admiral markets hope that you know wherever you are in the world we hope that you're safe and well and uh, making the best of the, uh, the situation that we find ourselves in and uh, we uh, we thank you for coming here to to join us okay to join us on your own particular uh, uh, trading journey so Without uh, further ado, I can see we've got a few people in here now. Okay, from uh, from all over. You know, I uh, I'm always very very wary that um, uh, that you know we have a, a wide range of people who come and join us today, from from complete beginners to guys and girls who've been trading for might be two years or two decades. You're all very very welcome. It's fantastic to have you here. If you just uh, bear with us a moment, let's bring up the slides and then let's let's sort of uh, crack on with what we're going here to to talk about today. So just bear with us one moment. Super. So hopefully you can uh, see the, uh, the the slide. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can still uh, hear me and you can see me. If you can, that's uh, that's a, that's a great. If you've uh, got any particular uh, uh, questions or thoughts as we go through, then please you know feel free to, to pop them in. Um, after this session, I'll also be in our traders yard room if you want to join us to ask questions about this particular session, or actually any of your uh, burning trading questions that uh, that you may have. So uh, welcome today, because today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to add to your trade and build a position. Uh, and as it says there, how to improve your equity curve by milking your winning trades. So um, as I said, I appreciate that we'll have a wide range of people in the room and their experience. Um, this would probably uh, sort of lend itself more towards people who have some sort of live trading experience. Maybe they've been trading for 6, 12, 18 months, okay, and actually looking at how ways that they can improve their performance uh, and effectively sort of just, you know, shift their equity curve in the, uh, in the right direction. But even if you're a new trader, what we're going to talk about here today in terms of the thoughts and the concepts and the ideas are, are still applicable to you and it's a good little uh, sort of technique for you to a uh, simple technique that you can uh, that you can actually sort of learn and utilize in your own particular uh, um, trading uh, journey uh, and as i said you know my uh, i'll be in the traders uh, spotlight community on traders yard after this session and uh, my wonderful host has uh, just posted that in the uh, in the chat box there so you can have a link there you'd be as always you're very uh, welcome to uh, uh, join us uh, if you're watching this uh, later on demand on uh, on our YouTube channel, Trading Spotlight YouTube channel. Well, then, please, if you've got questions or comments, you know, please feel free to do it. We always uh, look to take on board and engage with you. And if you found it useful, please give us a like. That always uh, that always helps us. So, you know, here we are, Admiral Markets, a, a kind of a, a global um, broker that uh, provides a wide range of financial instruments for you uh, to, to trade, provides a uh, sort of global presence with uh, support in local languages, and they are regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments across the globe, providing competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products and allowing the opportunity to engage with markets using popular trading platforms of MT4 and MT5, plus their own Admiral Markets Supreme Edition. If you have any questions about Admiral Markets, please get in touch with your account representative and they will be very, very happy and uh, uh, very happy and glad to help you with, the, uh, with your uh, questions. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? What's on the agenda for today's session? So as I said, it's about sort of, you know, uh, adding to your trades in order to build a position. 
And we'll start by talking a little bit about, you know, what's the difference between a trade and a position. If any of you uh, experienced traders already know, then please put that in the chat box. It would be uh, interesting to know what your uh, own thoughts on there. Maybe you've already got an idea. Maybe you've got our own particular definition, but we will we'll carry on to it. What we'll also talk about is, you know, why do we want to add to winning trades? OK, you know, why do we want to do it? You know, what what is it that actually benefits? Is it, it does the reward outweigh the risk? And what we'll talk about then is, of course, is we'll all right, well, you know, that's all well and good, but how can we actually do it, Paul? All right, what what actual simple way could we do it so that we can actually start to, to build a position? And have no fear, I'm going to share that with you uh, later on in the session. And if there's time at the end, what we'll do is we'll look to switch across to the to the live charts and, and have a little look at, uh, you know, the live market and how that might sort of kind of help and play out in the particular uh, live market. So I always appreciate we're a little bit uh, nudge for time, but hopefully there'll be time at the end just for a couple of minutes just to to, to flip across and have a look so stick with us to the end so we can actually sort of you know you can see how it sort of looks in a uh, in a live market environment so uh, for those who don't know me uh, my name's paul i've traded for for many years um you know i've traded for uh, myself and traded for funds okay traded for high net worth individuals and i've coached you know probably hundreds maybe even thousands of traders over the last few years so lots of experience there uh, primarily my own trading okay i like to trade trends on sort of longer term trading uh, sort of swing and uh, position trading and then I'm preferably a uh, sort of mean reversion and reversal trader uh, when i'm trading on an intraday basis so then let's talk about how to add to your trade and build a position. Now, it would be interesting to know of the people here in the uh, the room, uh, how many of you at present actually already add to your trades? How many of you actually go about actively building a position? Maybe you scale in a bit, maybe you scale out a bit, maybe you like to add to winning trades, maybe you like to average down on your positions. There's no particular red judgment right here at this uh, particular moment. It'd just be interesting to know what, if any, tactics you do employ in an effort to effectively to uh, sort of add to your particular trades and build and build a position. If you have that, that uh, that would be uh, that's always interesting to uh, to know. And uh, it's a case, uh, um, you know, it's a case we'll look uh, at that. So I think a couple of people have, have said perhaps maybe there's a, there's a kind of seeing a little bit of uh, maybe there's a kind of a little bit of a uh, um, Sort of bleed in from uh, from uh, from other elements. Okay, there in, into the uh, into the slides. I'll just move this around. Hopefully, it'll just uh, you'll be able to see it just a little bit uh, easier there. You know, we're we're sort of uh, live streaming this into YouTube as well. And for those of you joining us through YouTube, it's great to have you. Uh, great to have you on board. Super to so, uh, to actually to 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 see you here. Um. Uh, so, you know, adding to your trade and building position. So, you know, as the slide says, uh, you know the. The kind of sad reality is that most retail traders are usually undercapitalized for their trading objectives. The vast majority of them have, you know, a little bit of trading capital, which perhaps may have, may have come from a uh, from you know some other kind of beneficial um, side hustle from their particular day job, etc. Maybe they've just been very good at saving up their funds. But generally, as a as a rule, most retail traders are usually undercapitalized for their own particular stretching trading objectives. The downside of that is that this quite often leads to overtrading uh, as traders try to quickly build capital. And the truth is, uh, this really works well in the uh, in the long run. All right. You know, what happens is you're trading with small capital, have a little bit of uh, success and then invariably want to sort of just grow and ramp their trading capital up very, very quickly. Primarily because very often, you know, they may not be terribly happy in their particular day job and they want to transition across to being a full time trader, you know, and that's understandable and that provides an element of motivation and inspiration. Uh, but when it leads to over trading in an effort to build uh, quickly build trading capital, it, it usually doesn't uh, it does, usually doesn't work too uh, too well in the uh, in the long run. You know, it's it, it, trading is um, trading is a lot of trading is about timing. And, and, and what I also mean in timing is that. It's, you know, you have to be in the kind of right place in the right space. And whenever we force anything in trading, when you force trades into the market, when you try to project what you want onto the market, um, invariably that normally gets bounced right back. Okay. And, and it's not, it's not that um, it's not that the market is out to get you, that the market is just like the ocean. Okay. It's just doing its thing. Okay. It's moving back and forth. It's doing its thing. And it's actually your job as a trader. Okay. To, to adapt to the, to the, to those ocean conditions, those market conditions and be able to actually be in flow with the market rather than trying to fight it. And when you find yourself forcing trade, when you find projecting what you want onto the market, 
as I say, it rarely, uh, it rarely ends well. However, today, what I want to do is I want to share with you a, a way to help build your equity curve that is in line with what you're actually doing, is actually sort of just building upon sort of winning positions and gives you an opportunity to effectively to sort of to milk your winning trades for want of a, uh, for want of a particular better word. As I said, you know, if, if you have already sort of add to your trades or you look to build positions, well, then, you know, if you do, you know, put that in the chat box, it'd be fascinating to hear, you know, why you do it, how you do it, what particular uh, sort of experiences you've had and what you've learned from it. What have you found challenging? Uh, you know, we always like, you know, love to hear that kind of uh, interaction for people and understanding their own particular experiences, because I think, you know, great, it can actually help everybody. You know, um, just because I sit here and do it, you know, uh, I still have, you know, plenty to learn about trading there, you know, you, the, the, the way working and operating in markets is, is they're actually you're never really done with learning okay there's always something new there's always something learning and you know when we have such a fantastic community here with Admiral Marcus that there's always an opportunity for everybody to learn from other people's experiences so please feel free to share those so Let's start with a, uh, a quote from a well-renowned trader. You may, you may love him, you may loathe him, okay? Either way, you can't sort of deny that the, the, the man has been a very successful trader and investor in his time. Uh, you know, many years ago, he came out with this uh, great quote that says, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, but how much you win when you're right and how little you lose when you're wrong. And it's absolutely spot on. It's absolutely true. And, you know, and I've seen that in, in my own trading. I've seen that in, you know, in the thousands of you know, traders I've either seen or worked with over the year over the years okay very often what happens is new traders they get they get really attached okay emotionally attached to, to trying to be right every time they trade and the truth of the matter is that you are unable to be and unlikely to be right every single time you put a trade on markets are just so huge so dynamic so fluid so fast moving that you know with the best will in the world you, you are going to be wrong okay you're going to be wrong you know uh, lots of times in your trading career the ability to embrace that, recognize that it's just that is just part of the kind of the uh, the ebb and flow of trading and of markets. The quicker you'll be able to sort of operate in those markets. And Mr. Soros is absolutely right. Okay, it doesn't actually matter, all right, that much about you know how often you're right or wrong. But it's actually about how much you win when you are right and how little you lose when you're wrong. OK, there's always that kind of old trading adage that you know you want to ride your winners and cut your losses you know which is all lovely and it's great but actually what we're going to talk about today is well you know how do you turn that into something that you can actually do on a day-to-day -day basis right after this particular session so as i said what does it actually mean to us traders how do we actually do that how do we actually turn these kind of trading adages into something that we can utilize on a day-by-day -day basis that will actually help us be better traders, build equity curve, give, put us in a position to achieve our own particular trading achieve, uh, goals and objectives. So the first thing we can do, the first thing we can do is that we can always be looking for what you'll hear me talk about are asymmetric reward to risk ratios in our trades. What does that mean for the completely new traders? Well, that basically means, you know, if you're if you're risking, you know, sort of, you know, ten dollars on one trade. OK, you should be looking to effectively that trade be able to earn the opportunity of 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars. So you've got asymmetric reward to risk ratio, as it says there, ideally, at least a minimum of uh, of two to one. If you have asymmetric reward to risk ratios, that means that when you are wrong in trades, as we said earlier, it happens to everybody. Everybody's wrong on their trades now and then, okay? It's just part of the ebb and flow of trading. But with an asymmetric reward to risk ratio, that means that actually it doesn't really matter too much how often you are uh, wrong because you are earning more on your winning trades than you are on your losing trades. This is what helps generate positive expectancy in our favor. And what you'll be able to see if you want to understand positive expectancy, uh, you'll be able to see that on a couple of the uh, previous webinars and videos that you will see on the uh, uh, Admiral Markets YouTube Trading Spotlight channel, you'll be able to go in there and find them and access that, and along with all that other wealth of uh, knowledge and experience and insight that we've uh, created for you over the last 18 months or so. So, as I said, 
Firstly, we're looking for asymmetric reward to risk ratios in our trades. And very often what we see is quite the opposite. OK, you know, we see quite the opposite is, you know, traders risking ten dollars to make three dollars. OK, and so they're actually they're right quite often. They're right quite often. But when they're wrong and when they have a cluster of being wrong, it adds up very, very quickly. You want to flip that. OK, you want to flip that. You don't want to be risking ten dollars to make three. You want to be risking three dollars to make ten. OK, that is the way that's that is the first way. That's a good way that we can actually start to, to help generate our uh, equity curve. Uh, and I have here, sorry, there's as a, a little image here. This is an image for myself. I, I should have, uh, I'm at my a different trading table today. Um, my normal trading desk, I have a little can of uh, Brasso there. So you might actually not know what Brasso is. Uh, Brasso is a, uh, it's kind of like a metal polishing. It's like a, for polishing brass, okay? Uh, and it's a quite a pungent smell if you want to open that can and that tin. Uh, but I have it there on my dress because sometimes it reminds me that, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes doing these things can be quite challenging. You know, you are, you are going, going beyond your comfort zone, you're forcing yourself to do something that you might actually not be very, very comfortable with. Uh, and sometimes I need to uh, sort of be reminded to uh, to uh, sort of uh, um, uh, get out the brasso and, and sort of brass up, uh, clean up my uh, um, a certain part of my anatomy and basically get the trade on and build a position, add to my trades. And that's what we're going to talk more about in a uh, in a particular moment. And as I said, you know, those asymmetric reward to risk ratios, they do help to begin with. OK, and that helps put expectancy in our favor. However, the major leaps in traders equity curves comes from when they add to their trades. OK, and this is where we start to get into the depth of it. When I have OK, when I have one trade in the market, you'll hear me talk about I have one trade. It is one trade, one entry, one stop loss, one exit, one trade. When I've had taken that initial trade and then I start to add to that trade, okay, maybe there's a second trade, maybe there's a third trade, maybe there's a fourth, maybe there's a fifth, maybe there's a sixth. This is when I'm actually building a position. So when you hear me say I have a position in a particular instrument, that means that I can actually have two or more actual trades altogether trading in line with, with whatever that particular market is doing. And this is where we start to get into the uh, sort of the nitty gritty about moving from just having a trade to building a position. And we're gonna talk about that more now. So for most people, as it says, talking about adding to your uh, positions, adding trades to positions is easy. Okay, it's very easy for me to just sit here and say, well, do you know what? Add to your winning trades, okay, and build a position. Very easy to say that, okay? But what we want to look at is, well, all right, well, actually, how do we do this? How do we do that? How do you actually do that in a, in a general market environment? Well, that's where a gentleman called Joe Ross comes in, uh, of which some of you might be saying, well, who, who is he? And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to, to know that, um, you know, does anybody actually know who Joe Ross is? Uh, Stefan says, does adding positions also apply to FX? Um, well, this is the great thing, Stefan, OK, is that, you know, what I'm going to share with you today is completely uh, time and instrument agnostic, as in whether it doesn't matter whether you're uh, trading a five minute chart or whether you're trading a monthly chart, doesn't matter whether you're trading euro, dollar, or you're trading Bitcoin, or you're trading silver, or you're, uh, or you're trading Amazon, okay? Uh, and, and most of the things, what you'll find is most of the, the concepts and ideas I share with you, uh, wherever possible, I try to share ones that, as I say, are time frame and instrument agnostic. So, so that well, however you particularly look at markets, whatever your particular favorite sort of instruments are, these particular tools, tactics, techniques, concepts, uh, will actually work for you and help for you okay that's what that's what my own kind of way of trying to, to to help you guys and girls is to just you know regardless of what you trade give you additional sort of uh, items that help you in your own particular trading journey because i appreciate we have people here who join us who are you know from a wide range okay of trading different time frames different instruments but what we're going to talk about is, uh, is you know, Joe Ross, okay? And as I said, some people might know who Joe, Joe Ross is. Some people may have never heard of him. Well, if you haven't, you're about to find out. So um, Joe Ross is, uh, you know, he's, he's kind of deemed to be kind of trading's equivalent of Warren Buffett, okay? Warren Buffett has been in markets for what must be maybe, what, 60-odd years, maybe 60, 70 years as an investor. Uh, Joe Ross is, you know, he's been trading for over 50 years. He's, he's a well-regarded trader, and he developed a, a simple tool, okay, a simple very simple setup uh, one of which i use uh, is called the ross hook okay named after himself 
Maybe you've heard of the Ross Hook. Maybe you might, you know, in scrolling and forums or reading stuff, maybe you'd have heard of the Ross Hook, but you didn't know what it was, or you didn't know how it, how it, you know, how it actually played out, or actually how you could use it yourself. Well, you're at the right place, ladies and gentlemen, because you're about to find out, you know, what it is and how you can use it for your own particular trading setups. So here is what a Ross Hook is, and here's the definition. Okay, there's a couple of definitions, but here's the first definition. Let's just move myself out of the way here, shall we? Okay, definition problem. A Ross hook occurs when the number two point of a one, two, three formation is violated and when prices fail to continue in the direction they were moving as a result of the violation. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Let's get the old drawing tool. Over. I appreciate it helps, uh, you know, to use the drawing tool. So I'm, I'm hoping that you can uh, basically all see here, you know, this was, a, this was actually a lovely trade of mine on silver the other, the other day. Uh, and what it was, was this was a, a nice double top we had here, which is also can be utilized as a, a, what they call a one, two, three formation. So you've got point one up here, point two down here, point three up here. So, a Ross hook occurs when the two point, number two point of a one, two, three formation is violated and prices fail to continue in the direction they were moving. What does that actually mean? So let's just say this was point two here, wasn't it? We'll just draw our line across there. We can see here this candle here. Okay. As I always say every week, I, I'm a better trader than an artist, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, please uh, forgive me if my uh, artistry is not as uh, is not as good as, uh, as could be hoped, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to get the gist. We see this big candle here, okay? In this particular event, this trade, the candle actually has broken that level two, okay? The level, that level two of the one, two, three formation is violated. The next part is, is when price fails to continue in the direction they were moving. If we look at the next candle, the next candle, the low of that next candle on the short side, it's actually higher. It hasn't, it hasn't actually continued. What we were hoping for is actually it would continue, but it hasn't. Price has failed okay to continue in the direction they were moving this suddenly now becomes a ross hook okay this suddenly becomes a ross hook ladies and gentlemen and we're going to talk about that in particular depth okay in a bit more but remember it's when a one two three formation or a little bit of congestion price violates okay the point two but then fails at the point it fails to continue okay in the direction of the uh, of the move that is when a ross hook is formed okay as i said just uh we'll just look at that there so you know what we had was point two was broken by this candle and then actually it failed and look at the lows okay look at the lows okay of these particular candles there ladies and gentlemen right because actually this is what happened price broke it but actually then for the next this was a this actually i think was a, a hourly candles it actually came back and it pulled back okay it pulled back before that existing trend extended and remember here's what it says every instant of subsequent failures of price to move in the direction of the original point two violation also creates a ross hook so what we see is you know price let me just uh, bring up here price basically price pushes down the low here is low in this one but the next candle doesn't this is now another Ross hook. I'm going to use little V's to draw them. Then price continues down here, okay? It continues down, it continues down, but then it fails to. That becomes a Ross hook. Price has continues down, price continues down, price fails to continue down, and actually what we have is another Ross hook before it moves down again. Price moves down, price moves down, price fails to move down. There is another Ross hook. Price breaks, okay? moves down but fails to do it again and we have another ross hook there so i'm hoping that actually you can see there what actually how they set up and how they happen you might not you might have just been watching this but not actually realized that it had a, an actual official name you might not have realized that the kind of the context within which this occurred and that can be the key part but just what i want you to see is that when every time you know the price breaks like a, a point two and then fails okay fails to continue in the direction that forms a ross hook and for the moment, that's all I need you to, to think about. I just need you to be able to, to recognize it for the moment. You don't need you to, I don't need you to do anything right at this particular uh, moment. The other definition, okay, of a Ross hook here, let's get up the old drawing tool here. As, as it says here, a Ross hook occurs when prices fail to continue 
in the direction they were moving following a breakout from any type of consolidation. So any type of sideways market, okay? So let's have a look at here. This is, I think this might have been a gold chart, okay, from, uh, from my own trades. Uh, hopefully you can see here that in this particular range, I think this was the weekly chart here, price was actually pretty much in a, in a sideways move, okay, for a couple of months, actually, just, just bouncing around there. But then what happened is, hopefully you can see here, is that we actually had, you know, that week we broke out and we closed outside of that range. Super, we have our high here. The next week, even though we had a bit of a doji candle, we actually, we still formed a new high there. And the third week, price moved on and we still formed a new high. But here's what happens the next week, okay? The next week, price fails to make a, a new high, doesn't it? Price fails to make a new high. What we have there, ladies and gentlemen, is a Ross hook, okay? Right, remember that, okay? Price, you know, fails to continue in the direction that we're moving, following a breakout from any type of consolidation. That's what becomes kind of important to it. I'll just, that, that might just be uh, particularly me. Let's just move that out of the, uh, out of the way for, for the moment, okay? To try and make it a bit clearer for you. And, but that's it, okay? Just what we're looking for is price breaks out, makes a new high. Next week continues, makes a new high continues to make a new high and then this week it fails to make a new high that is a ross hook okay it fails to make a new high that is when a ross hook is formed and that can be actually kind of useful information for us that can actually be quite critical quite useful and we can use that information to to help us with our own particular trading So I hope that you can actually see that. I hope you can recognize and understand that. Okay, I hope you can start to see that in price action when it plays out. Why do we use it? Well, as I kind of explained to Stefan earlier on, the Ross hook works equally well in all markets and in all time frames. So I appreciate, you know, we've got a lot of people here joining us today. As I said, some of you might be five minute euro dollar traders. Some of you might be four hour crypto traders some of you might sort of trade you know sort of silver on the on a kind of a longer term basis ross hook okay works equally well in all markets and in all time frames the reason it's created is is a universal truth okay namely that periodically there are always going to be some traders taking profits whatever when that price broke out there will be some traders who once it's moved up they will have taken their profits what you're looking at is the good thing for us is when you trade the hook, okay, you, you don't need any indicators. You don't need any mathematical formulas. There's no complications of any kind. It is simple and it's mechanical. The Ross hook stands on the fact that it exists. The Ross hook directly reflects what the market is doing, okay? The market is always communicating to you. Right, the market is always communicating to you. It's up to you to learn and understand the language of that market. Can an indicator do that? No, not a chance. All right, there is nothing to interpret with the Ross hook, and this is why I think it's actually useful for new traders to learn and understand because there's nothing to interpret. It is either there or it isn't. There is either a Ross hook or there isn't. It is as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you don't need to overcomplicate it. You don't need, you know, specific mathematical formulas. You don't need lots of indicators on your chart to work out. It's either there or it isn't. And that's it. And I think that is actually crucial and really helpful for, for new traders. So, you know, once again, and just even in this particular one here, you know, this, this example here is named price has been just going sideways. It breaks out breaks out we get a new high next candle 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 isn't a new high nor is the next candle we have a ross hook there then actually we can see that the momentum comes back and we start to make once again new high new high new high fails to make a new high so we've got two ross hooks there just two Ross hooks, just even in that move there. And it's very clear, it's either there or it isn't, okay? If, if it does not make, in a, a bullish breakup, it does not continue to make new highs every candle and pulls back, that is a Ross hook. 
Okay, that is a Ross hook. That's what we're particularly looking for. So, as I said, you know, for all traders and particularly for new traders, Ross hook provides a simple mechanical signal for when to add to our initial trades. Okay, once in a trade, we add to our position every time a Ross hook is formed. Okay, that's what we do every time we're in a trade, whether it be a one, two, three breakout, a breakout from a uh, from a period of sideways or consolidation, maybe it's on a pullback, is that you enter whenever a Ross hook is formed. Every time a Ross hook is formed in your trade, you add to it. And you have two options, okay? You have two options here. You either enter on the break of the Ross hook. What that means is, you know, once price comes back, in this particular case, and trade through where the Ross hook was, is formed, well, then basically you're adding to your trade there. You're adding to your trade, okay? So if you have bought the initial breakout in this particular example, when you get the Ross hook, well, when actually when price comes back, trades back up above the candle that formed the Ross hook, you're adding, okay? You're adding another trade to your position. Or if you're a bit more, uh, if you're a little bit more aggressive, if you're a little bit more, I think, is that you can enter on the break of the higher low of the of the candle. So in this particular case, the Ross hooks found formed here, then the next candle lows, and then actually we have another candle low, and actually it's when price breaks the high of that particular candle that we enter. Okay, so actually either you uh, you enter on the break of the Ross hook level itself, or as the price kind of sinks you basically look to, to effectively to buy as, as the momentum, as the bullish momentum returns to that market. That's when you look at it. And so that depends upon your risk appetite, okay? That depends upon your confidence, that depends upon, you know, your, your particular uh, style of trading. But what we're looking to do is to just ensure that we add to our position every time a Ross hook is formed and then broken. That is that is how we start to add to our winning trades. This is how we actually start to move from just having one trade to actually building a position, actually having two, three, four trades, okay, together, that builds a position. So now we, we are starting to sort of fulfill that old trading adage of ride your winners, cut your losses, okay? That is what becomes kind of key and in, uh, very important to us. Um, so you know, here's a scruffy, here's a scruffy example, sort of you know, from trading. This is a four-hour chart here. Okay, this is the uh, here we go drawing tool. This is a four-hour chart on the Aussie against the Swiss franc. Uh, and in fact, actually, what had happened is that uh, the Aussie Swiss franc had been in a bit of a, a long downtrend. Uh, price actually pulled back here in this particular case, right? It pulled back to the uh, um, uh, it pulled back to the 200 period moving average. There's the kind of the really dark green uh, candle there. Uh, and actually what we look to do is, you know, my initial entry here was at uh, 69.18 uh, and my stop loss was at 69.48 uh, uh, there. So uh, uh, Stefan says, do you build a position only after having reached the, fry, the free ride, okay, broken even with entry costs? Um, I, I personally don't, okay, but as, as, as you will see here, Stefan, okay, what you're actually doing is Ross hooks tend to only set up after the trade has already moved in your direction a considerable amount. So what we're doing is we're adding to trades that are already pretty much in winning positions. We're certainly not looking to average down and kind of double down on positions. But in this particular example, you know, we entered the trade, the initial entry, the trade 69.18 here, price breaks, makes a new low. Price makes a new low. Then price fails to make a new low. A Ross hook was formed here. Then price carries up again and actually fails to, to follow through there. But actually what we do is, and this is this is what's called AO1, add on one. I added to my trade there, okay, 68.88. And you can see price actually dropped again. But then it failed to make a new low, failed to make a new low. But actually my entry order was there to take us in when actually the momentum, the, the bearish momentum actually sort of followed through. Price makes a new low but then price fails to make a new low on this one. And then actually, but it's actually the next candle price fails to make a new low, but we're triggered in to actually hit what was our existing initial target of 67.76. So just in one particular trade, you had one, two, three opportunities to add to that as Ross hooks were formed and then momentum 
momentum return, momentum return. Remember, Ross Hook is formed because somebody somewhere is taking a bit of profit, okay? And if all those sellers, somebody's taking a bit of profit, they're buying, okay, to basically close out the position, price comes back a bit. But then actually the, the people who've been sat on the sidelines waiting to get short, they're piling back in. And so what we actually have now is, you know, is, is you know, the, the trade there, one simple trade actually becomes a position of four trades, okay? Four trades that take us all the way to our winning position there at 67.76. And hopefully you can imagine that actually makes a massive big opportunity, okay? Massive big opportunity to actually effectively to milk your winning trades, to actually to add and to ride your winners rather than uh, uh, rather than do it. Uh, where do the stops uh, for the stops for uh, AO1 and uh, AO2? They actually, they go, they just go above the, the recent highs as we're going down, okay? They're just going above the the, um, the 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 recent highs. That's and that's the key. That's the key thing as well. We're not trying to. You certainly don't uh, add your uh, stop loss to keep your stop loss at the existing position. Once you're starting to get your add-ons, your stop losses will move down with them, and you, you use them as you take the candles that you are creating for the add-on positions. So you know, on a this is on a four-hour chart, so you get plenty of time to see that kind of setup, you know, um, setup being created. You get time to actually to work out where your entry is, where your stop loss, what your risk management is, which we're going to come on to in a moment, and it allows you to actually just to, to set up and, and ride it and drive it in uh, in real time. Time, but without uh, without a, uh, a thing. Um, in terms of what my uh, TP, what my top, that was a, a, effectively that was probably um, on that trade. It was based on a, a future level of uh, what was support front. So I was actually. I like to basically look where the big levels of support are and then I want to sort of get out just in front of them. I'm not trying to be a, as the old trading adage goes, I'm not trying to be a dick for a tick. I'm just trying to get a little piece of the uh, of the trade. I'm not trying to uh, um, get everything in every part of it. So um, hopefully that gives you um, just a, a little bit of an example of how you can set up. I've got a few more examples we can go through. Um, yeah, I wrote out actually what actually happened here. So uh, I actually only took two of the three add-ons uh, and the only reason for that is because one of them happened overnight, all right? and uh, uh, even I have to sleep now and then, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So, um, so actually, what it was was you know the initial trade, uh, two add-ons. There was a third possible, but that happened overnight, and I, I wasn't in a position to to, to take that. Um, you can probably take a screenshot of that if you want to actually read all the data on the side about what what the trades were and how it actually ended up. Uh, but actually, it was a very it was a very nice profitable position, uh, and that actually sort of you know that that makes us happy, and it just shows you how you can actually look and do this. You're looking to to effectively to milk your winning trades as they uh, as they play out. Uh, you're very welcome, St Stefan. Does great explanation. Many thanks, Paul. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. You know, as I said, we're we're here to help. We're here to sort of try and provide these kind of little ideas and thoughts and concepts to help you to just give you a little bit of idea about how you could do it. And as I said, this is on a four hour Aussie uh, Swiss franc FX chart. But that chart really could be anything, okay? It could be monthly silver, it could be Bitcoin, it could be, uh, you know, it could be gold, it could be Amazon, okay? Uh, the price action, it's all based around the price action. It's a mechanical thing. It's either there or it isn't. And that's the that's the key thing we want to take on board. Um, this is an example on, uh, this is the Kiwi against the US dollar. This is the, the weekly um, the weekly chart. And actually what we saw here, bringing on the tool, it is that invariably, you know, price has been in a downtrend. It actually pulled back. Uh, and was looking to, to basically to get short uh, with a, a very long term target here, just in front of what is you know a big level of uh, big level of support, and actually you know start to look at it. Well, actually, what happened? All right, and uh, what happened, and how did we how do we manage this particular uh, trade? Well, when actually when you move down to the daily chart on it, okay, uh, you know, and I and I only suggest really doing that you know on the kind of the longer term time frames is that. What we saw was that there was actually quite a lot of a uh, quite a lot of Ross hooks that were formed. Okay, when that, when price actually failed to sort of you know to to kind of move down, make new highs, what we had was quite a considerable amount of Ross hooks were formed. Some of them which provided uh, opportunities to add to, uh, and suddenly you know suddenly you've gone from having one initial trade to actually adding and building. Okay, and building you know a really good um, position that that ran in this particular case all the way down to that kind of long term target. It, which was just as I say, just in front of the, uh, uh, just in front of a kind of a, a longer, a longer term support level. Okay, I don't try and, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm happy to get out in front of them, just in front of them. I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to uh, uh, push this the way through. Um, Samu says, thank you so much. This is valuable information. Um, you're very welcome, Samu. It's great. I mean, you know, it's great that you're gonna, you can uh, take it on board. All right, we we hope to, uh, you know, we're, we're here to help. 
Um, here's another example. This is silver. Okay, and this is the weekly chart, and um, uh, this is a this was a, a weird one for me because um, for some reason I actually missed I actually missed the initial setup of this you know price being in its downtrend. Okay, waving down, comes back to the 50 pair moving average, puts in a rejection candle, which is also bearish engulfing, which is also a key reversal, and somehow I missed it. I, I have no idea how I missed it, but you know I was, uh, but you know. Uh, you know, do not fear. There's always there's always a, another way. Okay, and actually, what you can see is that invariably, what happened is once that trend started taking off, it, it created quite a few. Okay, quite a few Ross hooks. Okay, remember, you know, the Ross hooks are formed right when your know, price makes new low, but then it fails to continue. Okay, when the candles fail to continue, you start to get Ross hooks. Okay, and that when they pull back. That's your opportunity to add to your position, and that is key, legend. That's you know that I, I can't stress that enough. That is really key. Okay, you know you're you're just looking to add those to that initial trade, and what's the, this is allowing you to do is this is allowing you to build a position. This is allowing you to milk your winning trades. Okay, this is allowing you to 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 do the best, you know, on your winning trades and i'm not every trade is going to give you this opportunity okay you know this is normally trades that are you know that uh, take off well they start really well for you they start running really well and you can see that it's actually starting to, to break into a uh, a good new strong trend and that gives you the opportunity you want to be able to sort of take take you know as much as you can out of that so uh you know as always we've got to talk about trade management and uh you know before you get too excited, ladies and gentlemen, it is always important to manage your risk, especially when you're going to actually sort of build a position. What we've always talked about here, myself and also, you know, on Trading Spotlight, is that normal risk parameters are to not risk more than 1% on a trade. And, that, and we stick by that. Okay, we stick by that. Never risk more than 1% on a trade. And my next rule is I never risk more than 2% on a position. All right. And remember, a position is a group of trades and the uh, the add-ons all right it's a, you know a position is a group of trades okay it's the initial trade with all the add-ons and how you manage this and this is how you manage the both the trade management and the risk management is that each ross hook add-on should be half the side of the preceding trade okay so if you risk one percent on your initial trade well your add-on the risk the size of that should only be half a percent and then the next trade will be a quarter of a percent. Then it's down to about 0.12.5 of a percent, okay? Each Ross Hook add-on should be half the size of the preceding trade. Very often, okay, very often traders trade the initial trade and then every add-on they kind of double their position size. That's not that's not a smart way to do, okay? That's almost like an upturn pyramid. You know, an upturn pyramid isn't very stable. That's not what we're trying to do here, okay? We're trying to milk a trade, but we're trying to do it in a smart, elegant you know, sensible way. You know, if you need to remind it, then just if, if you've ever been on holiday to the US and you might have, you know, a spare US $1 bill, stick it up on your uh, trading wall, you know, because on there you've got the uh, big uh, yeah, the big pyramid there. And it's, it's almost like each layer of your position, each trade within your position should be smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? Uh, and you need to keep an all-seeing eye vigilant over it all at the, at the very end, okay? As I said, quite often new traders get overly excited and they, you know, their initial trade is 1% and their add-on is 2% and their next add-on is 4%, the next add-on is 8%. And it's, a, it's, it's almost like an upturned pyramid. It doesn't take much for it to wobble and to, to, to destroy everything. We're doing it the opposite way, okay? Your initial trade can be 1%, but, you know, but everything beneath that half percent, quarter percent, 0.12 of a uh, 0.12 of a uh, percent. So uh, it's you know that's it. Um, Stefan says that um, Stefan says that yep, you know you, you have to be careful to sort of manage your margin requirements. You're absolutely right. Okay, absolutely uh, uh, right. Okay, and, you know, and that's that's something that you know we uh, we will look at in specific detail. Okay, but in another session when we go into sort of more advanced uh, margin requirements and, and managing the money management. But for today, Stefan, what I want you to do is I just I want you to get into the uh, a being able to uh, identify the Ross hook. B, sort of understand how to actually place a trade on it and C, just make sure that make sure that each position size, okay, is small. And, and actually what I recommend to traders, what I actually recommend to traders, because sometimes it can be challenging for them to, to do that, it is actually what I would recommend is that just to begin with, every add-on, do it at the smallest position size. So these days, that would be kind of like one micro lot, okay? Get yourself into the habit of adding on to your trades, okay? That in itself is just a good starting point. 
I hope that answers. So, as I said, doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, but how much you win when you're right and how little you lose when you're wrong. And that's what we've been trying to work here and sort of showing you how to do that. So here's some action points for you to take away, ladies and gentlemen. Go and look at, back at some of your winning, previous winning trades. Just you know, if you've kept good screenshots, just take a little look at them. Were there opportunities to add to them? Okay, Were the Ross Hawks created in those trades? What impact would that have made to the overall result if you'd actually you know, just traded every Ross Hook add-on to your trade? What effect do you think that might have had on your overall profitability? And based upon what we've shared here today, could you devise those similar tactics so that you're in a position to add to your existing trading plan to be able to move from taking a trade to building a position? Some good action points, take them away. The smart traders who are listening and watching this will go away and start looking back over their recent trades and start seeing how this could have made you know, a huge difference to their, uh, to their own particular trading. And it is uh, you know, absolutely uh, spot on. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we talked about a little bit about the legends of George Soros and Joe Ross, all right? And what we wanted to look at is how to milk our trades to add to our profitability. We talked about using a Ross hook, simple, clear, a mechanical way to add to your trade. Okay, it's either there or it isn't. There is no, there is no ambiguity. And also remember, each trade should be half the position size in terms of your trading capital. Take that on board. So, as I said, uh, you know, if you want to ask me questions about that or anything else, you can do so by joining our uh, exclusive uh, trading spotlight community on uh, Traders Yard. You'll see my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, are always putting up uh, great stuff on there as well. And I'm always around to answer your uh, particular questions. And don't forget to join us uh, next time. OK, so uh, um, next time, it's actually be next uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's actually going to be me again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be talking about online shopping stocks uh, and are they still viable plays? Okay, because we've had the COVID pandemic that has affected the retail sector. And we're going to look at you know which ones of the particular uh, retail companies have thrived, which ones of them have struggled, and are there still opportunities? So you can join me there for that. That's going to be Wednesday, 17th of February, 2 p.m. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the Admiral Markets website to register for the live webinars. So I hope you have found that useful. I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought you can take away, something you can actually look at. Simple, it's clear, it's mechanical. As I said, go away and do those tasks. Look at actually what the kind of the, those trades have, uh, have uh, offered you. Okay, your previous trades, were there opportunities for you to add to them and build a position? And what would that have actually made in terms of difference to your uh, overall profitability? Would that have actually allowed you to, uh, to, to do that? So, uh, as I said, you know, uh, if uh, I hope you found that useful. If you want to contact us, okay, you can actually uh, chat to us, okay, you can contact us here at Admiral Markets. You can email at global at admiralmarkets.com, YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Admiral Markets, or facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. Uh, I apologize, we've not been able to go to cross to the uh, live markets. As always, we've uh, just run a little bit out of time, a little bit over a uh, border. I apologize for that, but what I will do is in the traders' uh, yard, what I'll do over the next few days is put up a few examples okay of uh, you know ross hook add-on trades that will be able to to do that i hope you found that useful thanks ibrahim thanks yomi says thank you Opera says thank you for this webinar that's great that's super i hope uh, i hope you all have a yeah stefan says all thumbs up very useful indeed you're very welcome stefan i hope it's given you all some great food for thought as always i just end with you know i wish you the very best of success in your own trading ladies and gentlemen and uh, i look forward to speaking to you soon trade well everybody cheers <laughs>